everyone from on the porch, but as you can see, we're inside Win TV Studios this morning. <clears throat> and I'm very excited to have Lori Brown, director of um, the League of Conservation Voters. And we have a lot going on this session to, to say it simply, just save our planet. Lori, how are you? Oh, I'm great, Jane. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to be here with you today and, and speak a little bit about some of the environmental priorities this session. Thank you so much. And thank you for what you do, because as you know, um, we all know that our planet, you know, is suffering. And every time a bill gets passed that does a little bit towards um, making it better, it's um, very important. And um, at the end of the show, I'll tell people how they can go on and find their legislators, etc. So I know, um, as we were just discussing before the show start, um, you know, the horseshoe crab bill, which was so important. We tried so hard last year and it just didn't pull through. Um, can you tell us why saving horseshoe crabs is important? Um, ab absolutely. And, and like you said, there are a number of bills that came back. Um, from last session that were really important, but didn't quite make it over the finish line. But um, just before I sort of get into the details and, and, you know, the League of Conservation Voters works with all of the environmental groups across Connecticut that have legislation year after year that they bring to the Capitol. And so we work with all of those groups. And so I don't profess to be the absolute detailed expert in any of them, but we do a compilation of what the top priorities are of the group. And that is our watch list. So people, as you said at the end, people can look at the watch list and see all of the legislation in the different areas, whether it's right. the, the, the three big areas. And I'm so glad that wildlife was one of the big areas that really surfaced this session. And so wildlife, um, climate, and waste management are, are where most of our bills, big bills this session fall into. So, um, uh, and also I just want to say that we also do the environmental scorecard. So for your constituents who are interested in finding out how lawmakers voted on specific bills um, and overall what happened each session, because it's usually progressive. I mean, most bills don't make it over the finish line the first year. So it takes persistence of, of champions like you to really kind of make sure the ball keeps moving on each of them. And, and I do want to point out for your constituents that you've scored a 100 percent voting record on environmental legislation for the last four years. And that that I just want to applaud you for that. Well, Not everybody. Laurie. Let's make it a fifth year, you know. Yes, let's make it a fifth year. Let's make it a fifth year <laughs> and passing good legislation. I know, yeah. you know, only I, you know, learned about the horseshoe crab and how important they are to our eco environment. Yes. Um, but people don't realize, um, you know, that it's, you know, it is about animals. It is about power. We're trying to get the one over the line where we turn off the lights in municipal buildings to save and it's not just to save the electricity and our footprint it's for um the bird migration am i correct with that yes yes the two you highlighted are two of the four environmental bills that have passed the house they need to pass the senate the horseshoe crabs are something that i only learned about a couple of years ago and um, they are this ancient mariner species that is a keystone species it's critical for migrant their eggs are critical for migratory birds their blood is essential in in um, research uh for you know medicines right. but they are unfortunately there's nothing to protect them from being scooped up with big machines right off the beach and chopped up for bait and so it's just horrific to watch. I, I just can't even describe it. Um, but that finally um, of, of, you know, they're, they're millennial species, you know, they're, they've been around for millions of years. And so this legislation will provide some protection to prevent that kind of harvesting. The lighting pollution is especially interesting because light pollution is like lights at night that shine up in the sky from the buildings all night long for no reason and migratory birds get confused by the light because you know they okay. travel by light in certain corridors and they have they get confused and they start circling and they often crash into the buildings and and die um and so uh there's all different things that we can do but most importantly during certain migratory seasons we should do it all year but during certain migratory seasons, the bill that passed the House, thank you very much, would um, 
establish in state buildings would establish um you know timers to turn off the lights there's opportunities to hood lights always if you need a security specific right. area you know the things that should have been done a long time this has been a problem for a long long time the dark skies association has always been pushing right this. and just for you know uh, common folks you know it will save taxpayers money right because we're not using all that electricity that's just one of the exactly. end pluses you know um yep. Yep. and so that was one other, go ahead the, the, i was going to say the other one uh that you passed was the helium balloons you know the release of he, the, the intentional release of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of helium balloons people don't realize that those eventually land in the water and they uh really are very damaging for our waterways um they get you know animals get entangled in them um, they can appear to be food for turtles out in the oceans. And so it's just a lot of plastic, too, and we don't need more plastic. So um, people can still have their helium balloons, but they will not be allowed to release these huge numbers into the skies. So that, right. that is a, a good protection. And the other thing that I think was newer this year was a program to restore eelgrass, which is really critical on our shorelines. It's habitat, but it also helps protect against sea level rise, you know, natural, uh, the, all the wetlands that are on our coastlines that, that are disappearing. Um, eelgrass is a core, core component of that. And so there was a program to help restore eelgrass. Right. Uh, and those four, again, they need to pass the Senate. So, you know, we, we're, we're reach out to your senator. Clock. Right. We need our senators and we are racing against the clock and none of these should be controversial. They should not be. Right. Right. We had a little yeah. bit with the balloon, but and I have to say I was actually known in my previous one of my previous lives as the balloon queen because I loved balloons at any event, not releasing them, but tons of balloons. And we went to no balloon, um, you know, some year, probably about eight years ago, just wow. because why let's find other ways to celebrate, right? So that's for, very forward thinking. You've got to be forward thinking. You have to think beyond the next couple of years. And and that's the problem we have with climate, of course. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's so big and a lot of people just feel like, well, what can we do? And in fact, there's a lot, there's a lot we can do and that we are doing. And it's not, you know, breaking the bank and it's not, you know, oh my gosh, my business is going to go under. No. A lot of businesses, a lot of advocates, a lot of municipalities and states and countries are taking huge action and things are working. We're, we're right. working. We're not going fast enough. That's the problem. Right. So and one of the naysayers need to, you know, like a, a lot of the, the big polluters, I mean, they're, while they're screaming about these changes and <clears throat> not wanting to switch away from fossil fuels and, um, they're actually at the same time looking to how they can make money off this next, you know, important wave of, of clean energy. And right. everybody's taking steps behind the scenes, even though publicly fighting to kind of keep the status quo. I visited last week in Windsor. We have a geothermal company oh. working on geothermal projects. And so it's all these little pieces. Our Habitat for Humanity houses that were built in Windsor were done with energy efficiency um, construction. So it'll also lower their bill. So Everything we do is just a little bit. The new in Windsor, and I think Windsor Walks may already have it, is composting your foods. Uh, do, is it a pilot project or is it? It is a pilot. There's a certain amount of them that if you call it Windsor Town Hall, they have them for free, the kits. And then you have to take them once a week to our landfill. There's mm -hmm. a special section for them where it'll be made into um, compost. That's fantastic. That that that's everything you want, right? Because food waste <clears throat> is the big piece that everybody seems to agree on. That is what is it like twenty percent of our entire? I mean, we're right. shipping out eight hundred thousand tons of garbage, shipping it out of state to be burned in someone else's land. Right, um, and it, it's just horrible. And so, um, you know, the bill six 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 four, the big waste sort of big bill that came through right. environment it did get stripped down with a lot of there was a lot to it um but the core remained uh as diversion of food waste and i've also just heard that and that has new life apparently there's a lot of work that needs to be done in it but a lot of it is all about the food waste diversion and i just heard um that the 
uh, green bank, you know, Connecticut's green yep. bank that invests in green infrastructure, et cetera, that they are going to be able to finance bringing up to scale some of the businesses out there that can do this great work of food, you know, waste, uh, composting and all that, right. and that it would be funded and brought to scale. So that's good news when you put money, you know, behind something. Right. <laughs> Well, and I was it in that bill that they would also, um, I I think it went down to encourage um, grocery stores, et cetera, <clears throat> to de donate food to our oh, food was, instead uh, of throwing that, it out. I think that was Mary Mashinsky's uh, bill originally, and I think something happened to that. I don't know if it made it into another bill or if it was resurrected as part of that. I I don't know. I, you know, I have. Um, there are 30 bills that we're watching well, right now. I tell people 5,000 get proposed, right? Yes. An average right. of 5,000. And it whittles down to under 300. So, and it's a lot. And even knowing 300 is a lot because inside each bill, there can be, you know, I know there's one omnibus bill that has like 30 bills underneath it, right? The SB7, the energy bill. <laughs> yeah, that's one. Yeah, they, they t well, we were encouraged this year to combine, to be creative and combine. But, you know, the aircraft carrier bill is classic. You know, that's where you put a lot of things that people want, but a whole lot of stuff that people may not want at all. Wow. And you end up with something that, you know, well, what in, you between. in between, in um, between. <clears throat> but the big issue, I guess, is the time right now that it's right. always the clock. It's always the clock. It is. <clears throat> and um, we have um, some big must, must pass bills. Right. Um, can, are those on your website where someone could easily go and see what those priority bills are? Yes, absolutely. We keep a watch list that we update weekly. Um, it's on our website at ctlcv.org, so Connecticut League of Conservation Voters.org. And that I'm going to actually be updating that today because a number of bills obviously drop off when they don't get acted on, right. and others, you know, get merged and positions. We, we're expecting a fair number of floor amendments, um, good amendments that we'd like to see um, right. make these bills stronger. Um, because a lot of them got weakened along the way for different reasons just to get out of committee. And now right. we've got to get them back to what they can be meaningful. Right. Um, and, and that's so the, clock, the, June the 7th. process, though, is, you know, a bill will come out either of the House or the Senate. That's one huge hurdle, right, to get it out and make sure it gets voted on and gets passed. Then it goes to the other chamber. It is not a given that the other chamber will then vote positively. So people, if it's important to them, you have to reach out to your senator, to your state rep or reps, um, and then the governor has to sign it. So it is three entities really working strongly and with organizations like yours, which are crucial to help us make the bills better, to help propose the bills because we can't know everything that's going on. So it's really important for um your organization and others to be vocal. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. And and it's important for us that there be champions at the legislature willing to work on, you know, willing really willing to fight and stand up for, you know, things that we know we can get past. And I would say also that um, the key to really moving the bills are once the constituents of any particular lawmaker are aware of, of an issue, um, that's what is the true motivator. Because uh, like you, every lawmaker has to answer to their constituents and, and you right. want to help, you need to hear from them that they want this or they want that or they don't want something. So please, anybody who's listening, just um, know how powerful just a handful of phone calls from a constituent on one issue can be. Um, people right. think it's it's not like Congress, you know, the big black hole of Congress where, you know, you just have, no, you know, things. Uh, here we live in our communities. We exactly. know people, you know, so, yeah. you know, we're one of them. Um, and I have gotten a ton of emails um, for the light pollution one. Excellent. Um, and there were others too, but this one has been like at the forefront. Well, there's one, there's, there's two bills that I really want to make sure we, we talk about um, that are absolute must passes. And okay. one of them is, they're both about pesticides. Um, and one of them is about the pesticide rodenticides. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, those bait boxes that are put outside of buildings that have 
uh, rodenticide poison inside them and the you know mice and the other rodents will go in eat it it won't kill them right away and they'll come back and eat more and get it built up and then but they're you know they get loopy and, and they're easy prey for their natural predators which are birds of prey owls eagles even you know so and it kills those birds of prey so it builds up in their system it's it's a quite an I, I don't want to be too gruesome, but just so people understand, it it's an anticoagulant, which means they bleed to death internally over a period of time, and it's a yeah. horrible... It's, it's a cruel death. death. It's yes. a cruel death, and it's completely avoidable. Mm -hmm. And the people who are using this are not the individual people, homeowners. It's they're hiring, you know, a, a, a company to come and put them out there, and they're the cheapest form. Right. Uh, what, and they're worse than the original ones, which would kill them right away. These are baiting the birds of prey. So there's a bill that got passed out of um, environment, um, and it's 962. And unfortunately, they stripped out the important part, which was the use of it, and just left the sale of it um, not available to the public. It makes no difference. So we've hit a compromise where two-year ban with some exceptions, two-year ban while people get it sorted out. But that's what we really want. We need to see that amended on the floor. Because right, it could kill your pets, too. Oh, yeah. You I know, if you have a dog. Non -non exactly. Dogs, cats, foxes, you know, all, all the animals that would prey on, you know, mice and rats. And right. And yeah. so, you know, and everybody wants this except the people who make money off of it. So right. they're making these claims of, oh, there's going to be huge rat infestations all over, the, you know, and no, <laughs> you know, there are there are plenty of non-lethal um, alternatives. Right. So that's right. one. The other one that was, and that's from last year, uh, the rodenticides. The other one from last year that almost made it, you remember the neonicotinoids? And those are the, the probably the most widely used poisons to kill. It's an insecticide. And it's linked to massive bee and pollinator deaths. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, even one coated seed, we tried to get the seeds also banned, but one coated seed is enough to kill a songbird. So these things also get absorbed in the plants. They get absorbed in the flowers and the fruits. So it doesn't just wash off. It stays there and becomes toxic to our pollinators. Right. And so and we can't survive without the pollinators. That would mean no plants, no food. Right. And and we all of our wildlife is crashing and we've got to we've got to act and people care about this, but they just don't know what to do. Well, here's a big thing you can do. First of all, stop using pesticides on your lawn. There's plenty of alternatives. And even if you're going to stop only a little bit, do it during the flowering season. <laughs> don't put pesticides, you know, um, and find alternatives. There are plenty of them. Um, this is also no mo may. Um, which means don't mow your lawn in May when all the flowers are popping out and you have all the. I didn't know that. I just learned that too myself. So I'm sort of talking to my neighbors, just like, hey, you know, just like for a few weeks, could you? So well, it's um, so pretty to see the violets and even dandelions yeah. are beautiful, you know. So. And they're attractive too. Yeah, they don't. The other thing is, if you're going to mow, don't mow it to the ground. Let it, right. let it at least leave. And for grass, of course, is the worst problem but right. anyway those are two very they're t targeting two very different so for people not paying attention at the legislature you know oh, two pesticides we'll just pick one do that this year no no they're both really critical immediate bills and they're big coalitions behind both of them right so. but and it's changing what a lawn looks like because we stopped using them probably about five or six years ago you and personally yeah, we don't use yeah. any kind of anything Good because my dogs are out there too, you know, more my grandson comes. Yeah. We don't realize how much all that affects. Um, so my lawn is not the perfect, you know, turf type lawn, but it's beautiful nevertheless. And it's just getting used to it and changing. The, the pushback I heard from that, I think, is just um, people were like, well, how can we ban that? We need it for you know our agriculture we need it for 